You ever see something so cool, you're like, hey, I got to try that out for myself. Well, that's what I thought when I first saw components streaming from server actions. Check this out. So here we have an AI input. And we've all seen this before. It's the basic interface for ChatGPT. Well, well, let's look at the code that's building the AI response section. So over here in the action file, if we scroll down to the end, we see return new experimental streaming React response. And we see in here, div class name py2 params content. So we're actually right here in our server action, formatting this streaming HTML that is going back to the client for rendering. And it gets better. I'm going to bring in a standard counter like we've all seen before. I'm going to put that inside of the div. Hit save. Now let's try it again. And in addition to our text response, which is inside that div, we now have a counter. And you can click on that, and it's dynamic. We've actually streamed back a component from our server action into our application. How cool is that? Well, if you find that intriguing, which I can't imagine that you don't, I'm going to show you some really cool stuff as we integrate this with Spotify and dig deeper into what you can do with the components that we return from these server actions. Here's the application that we're going to build. We can give it some inspiration. Like, we want albums that feel like love. And then what do we get back? Well, we get some AI responses that these albums, I guess, Dark Side of the Moon, <laughs> are albums that are evocative of love, and we can then hit that add to saved albums and actually save them in our list of saved albums. It's a cool application that will not only teach you AI, but also teach you the app router and streaming server actions, and all of the source code is available to you for free on GitHub. Let's get right into it. All right, now putting a counter in there is cool, but connecting it to Spotify is even cooler. So let's go into our application, figure out its structure, and then figure out how to connect it to Spotify. So this is just a standard Next.js app router application. It's based on an example from the Versal library in their example section. The home page, which is the only one we're going to look at, is under page. Now they make it pretty clear in the documentation that you have to put this runtime edge in there so that when you deploy to Versal, it knows that it's going to be edge deployed. But outside of that, we're just using Tailwind to put a nice two-column layout for our application. Now, one really important thing that we're doing in our page is we are bringing in the handler. That is the server action that's going to be doing the streaming, and we're giving that to the chat component. So let's go take a look at that chat component. So our chat component brings in useChat. That's a custom hook that comes from the Versal AI library in its React section. And you give it that handler, which you get as a prop, that's the server action, and you give it that as the API. Now you can give the hook either a API route if you want to, or you can do a server action like we're doing here. And then you get back as outputs the messages, that's the response from the server action or the API. You get the input, so you can handle the input text, and then some ability to handle the input change and then handle submit. So let's go take a look at how we're gonna use that. So we start off with our form tag. Let's go and bring in the label. I've imported a number of Shad CN components here, including label and input and button, just to make it look nice. And our input connects to the input that we get from use chat. So we give it that value, and then we give it the on change with the handle input change. And then finally, we have our submit button that goes to on submit, and that on submit calls handle submit, and that handle submit then calls our server action and gets back our data. And what we get back is this array of messages. Now the messages have a role that can be either the user or the AI. And then in the case of user content, we're just gonna say user, and then we're gonna give the content. In the case of the AI, we're gonna get back the rendered UI, and we're gonna put the rendered UI in there instead. So I don't really think we need this. So let's just get rid of that line. And now let's see what we have. All right, so it's starting to look like the application that we built. Now let's go over and take a look at the action. So this is the server action that I showed before. We're currently bringing in that counter. Let's get rid of that. Now let's take a look at how we connect to OpenAI. With OpenAI, we call the completions create. We have to get the model. So in this case, we're going to call the 3.5 Turbo. But you get to define whatever you want with that. You could use GPT-4 if you wanted. Might be a little more expensive. I don't know. We want to say that it's streaming. So we're going to get back the response 
in streaming form. We're not going to get it back all in one big chunk right at the end. And then we tell it what our prompts are. And we need to give it a list of not only the messages that we want, but the messages that we have said previously. So we're having a conversation with the AI. Now, those messages are maintained by that use chat. So we really don't have to do much. It's just a question of what we want to send to the AI. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hack on content a little bit. And instead of just saying content, we're going to say that if it's user content, that's the actual prompt that we type in, that we're going to actually wrap that in our own custom prompt. And that says a bulleted list in the format of album and artist, of three music albums from this genre, 1970 to 2000, with beautiful album covers in the theme of, and then their content at the end of that. So we're kind of wrapping that little part of a prompt in a bigger prompt. So let's actually see what happens. But to make it a little easier to follow, let's change this into a pre. All right, let's go. Cool. All right. So that's the AI. Now the AI is responding with that prompt where he said, give us some album covers that feel like fire. And it gave us Fire and Water by Free, Fireball by Deep Purple, and Preservation Act 1 by The Kinks. Awesome. So now we need to parse through that return to string and parse out the name of the album and the name of the band. So let's go back into our action. And then up above the handler, I'm going to bring in a handy utility function. So this get albums function takes that AI string with all of their dashes and their quotes and uses a bunch of regexes on it to turn it into an array of objects where you've got artist and album. Let's go try it out. So down here, we'll simply JSON stringify the output of get albums. Let's give it a go. All right, okay, apparently Fleetwood Mac's rumors feels like wind as does YouTube's Achtung Baby. <laughs> okay, now let's go and connect that to Spotify. So we're going to go and make request to Spotify to get these albums. To do that, I'm going to bring in get album info from my local Spotify file. Now, Spotify, and of course, all of this code is available to you on GitHub for free, has a couple of functions. The first it has is get token. That's going to get your token with Spotify. Now, to get your token, you're going to need to specify the Spotify client ID as well as the Spotify client secret. So you get both of those from getting a web API key from Spotify. And then it's also got get album info. You give it an artist, you give it an album, and it goes and makes a request to the Spotify API using that token that it automatically goes and gets to get you back a big JSON blob that has all the information about that album. So let's go back into action. And then down inside of our UI, what we're going to do is asynchronously run all of those albums through our get album info. To do that, we call get albums. We get back an array from that. So we use map and we turn each one of those items, which has the album and the artist, into a promise. And that promise comes from get album info. It's asynchronous and it's got to go call Spotify. That then returns some album info that we turn into a URL, an image, a name, a release date, and an artist. And then we use promise.all to just wait for all of it. So let's go take a look at the data coming out of that. And try again. All right, not bad. So now I've got some cool stuff coming out of Spotify. I actually don't know what album that is since it doesn't show. So let's go and connect this with our cool album component so we can show visually what those albums are. So let's go bring in our album component. All right, so our album component, it takes all the information that we just gathered, including the URL, image, artist, name, and so on and so forth, and it turns it into a Shad CN card just to make it format nicely. All right, now that we've got a nice looking way to show our albums, let's go back into our action.tsx, and we'll change this pre into a set of invocations of that album. All right, so here we're creating a two column layout using grid. And then we're just going through and invoking album with all the data that we got back. And we're saying that we have allowed it to add. So we'll get to that in just a second. That's like how it's going to interact with the context. But let's go and give it a try and see how it goes. Ha <laughs> ha, not bad. I don't know what's up with that one. I, oh, Marvin Gaye, cool. All right, so rumors, this looks great, awesome. So 
Now that we have this really cool ability, we're returning client components that are interactive to our client. So can they actually interact with the other components on the page? Well, yes, they can. So what we're going to do is we're going to use context and we're going to wrap the page in a context where we can save albums. So let's go take a look at that context. So here we've got album provider. Now what album provider does is it creates a custom hook called use albums. So that's going to be a list of album info, just like we had before. And it's going to have the standard output from use date. So it's going to have the albums and then set albums. And the album context is just going to return that to whatever wants it. And then we got a handy helper hook called use albums context. That's going to go and return the output of that use date to whoever wants to use it. And then we have our albums provider component that we can use to provide that state down to wherever we want it. So let's go into our page and bring in that album provider. And then we'll just wrap our app in it. Now over here in our album, right at the top, we're going to want to bring in use album context so we can actually access that context. And then down the component, we call use album context to get the state with the albums and the set albums. And then finally, in that on ad, we're going to just append the current album that you're looking at to the array of albums when you click on that add button. All right, let's hit save. Go back into arc, try again, hit add to saved albums. And now we don't really know, so we need a saved albums viewer. So we need to actually show the content of that context. To do that, we'll go back over into our page. We'll bring in the saved albums component and then drop that in the second column. And let's try it one more time. Fire breathing dragons. Okay, deep purple. Add to saved albums. Awesome. So cool. All right. Now I know some of you might look at this and go, wow, this is a fantastic way to do micro front ends. You can simply just send code to the client and have it run. Well, that's not quite the way that this works. So what's actually happening here is that the album that we're sending back is just a invocation of the album code that's already in the bundle. So you can't actually send code. What you're doing is instead saying invoke album with these properties. It's the same mechanism that React and Next.js use when you change routes in Next.js. It sends back an RSC stream that's then rendered by the client. There's no super magic here. We're not actually sending dynamic code across the wire. What we are doing is just telling the client to invoke the components that it already has. Still, that is super exciting, and I can't wait to see what we end up doing with this. Of course, I'd love to hear from you in the comments about what you might think about doing with it. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.